I'm just here making another um, AD uh, video, my first one. A lot of you guys have expressed interest in building an AD, and we can make a series about um, building an AD. And we'll start at the easiest one. Uh, I made a video, two videos ago, about rushing to G3. Uh, with a free-to-play AD and a lot of you guys didn't think it's free-to-play But in my definition of free-to-play it is any monster that's not an F5 and easily obtainable so not LDs um, and, But AD as was HOH And the first AD um, guide I'll be uh, busting out is about Stall and stall can be considered as a script healing stall or it can be stall with a lot of um, Bruiserish type of monsters as well that takes a little while for you to clear um, so I'm just going to clear out some wings and uh, we'll jump right into it. <clears throat> so for our, uh, our guide, I have prepared a little uh, photo with the monsters in it. It's not a comprehensive, um, it's not a comprehensive image with all of the monsters, but these are monsters I felt that I've seen quite a lot. And also options that you can use as um, as a free to play um, user. Uh, if you don't have it, um, it's more obtainable than like an Ariel or a Praha. So this, um, I'll, I'll post the link of the image as well, so you have access to it. Uh, so this is the Arena Defense Guide: The Beginner's Introduction to Stall. So I've classified a lot of the monsters in uh, different sections and headlines under Double Nemesis Healers. Single Nemesis Healers, Damage Mitigation, and Delete This Unit. And all the monsters on the General Stall Units column, they're not ranked by any tier or anything like that, but they're just um, made by what I feel that is most common. The LD units aren't that aren't that common, but I felt that um, I've seen them, seen them there before. Might as well just toss it in if you have it. So we'll start under the double nemesis column. So Ariel Praha, what they do in Arena is to deter you from hitting it with a strong Lucian or a strong uh, Cleaver. The only way to really counter double nemesis healers is to run a Fluffer Lucian, that way you don't trigger trigger the first um, nemesis proc, or you run a Zyros that resets them and then they're essentially useless. Uh, but the purpose is uh, if you run it on speed, um, and then defense HP or HP HP depending on your room quality Most likely speed HP HP and on a will offset It really needs to be an, a will offset because if you don't have will I can just run a Ganymede and reset you and then your unit is essentially useless there so <clears throat> Those that's the first um, section the double ne nemesis healers. They're usually paired along with um, the general stall units and this includes uh, a lot of Rena's a lot of Camilla's if you decide to pair up with a bunch of water units along with your double nemesis healer, it's usually paired up with a fire unit to counter um, that wind unit that's going after your uh, your water monsters. So the idea here is you run a bunch of tank units, they do a lot of damage, and you heal back up, and then recess the playing field because they have no cooldowns because you healed back up. And then it takes a, like another rotation of two cooldowns for them to finish you off if um, if you heal back up. And then, and then that's single nemesis healers. I have Harmonia and Triana, very obtainable monsters. If you're going to build them for Arena, it's going to be speed nemesis uh, for them to heal. But if you want to run them on Will, um, they just get countered by Tiana. And Will, uh, Will, um, Will doesn't counter the Lucians at all. So that's why I recommend um, the single nemesis healers here uh, under only one nemesis and not double. You need them to be on violent nemesis because you want them to proc a billion times and keep healing, keep first skilling sleeping and have their passives um, coming back up, their skills back, going back up. And then under damage mitigation, we have Darien and Diaz. Um, as the name implies, what they're only good for is you run them on triple HP and what they're good for is soaking up uh, and reducing damage from your general stall units, right? Let's just say that you run Darien and three other tanks and I want to double Lucian you, but because there's a Darien Diaz passive there, I may want to think twice if I want to double Lucian you. So you may run something along the lines of Diaz, Camilla, uh, Rakan, and then Wind Monkey King. Just tossing out four random units here. 
Um, it's a little scary to double Lucian because we have a fire unit, you have Camilla, even though Camilla passive doesn't work with Diaz. Um, it's still scary because there's so much damage mitigation, so much triple HP threats there that it'll make me think twice if I really want to attack your defense. And then we have a whole section for dedicated to this one unit called D Delete This Unit. This unit is busted. If you have this unit, just pair it up with a bunch of other random units and you'll do fairly well. Free G1 unit, build it triple HP, it doesn't even matter what build you are, and just as long as you put resistance on it, okay? And then we have a bunch of general stall units that are generally um, paired up with the left bar under double nemesis, single nemesis uh, damage mitigation. And Camilla is probably one of the best, uh, if not the best, stall units uh, with, in, in the lower rank. Because in the higher rank, there are solutions to Camilla, like Quad Lucians, Double Lucians, uh, Fat Lucian, Pung Beck. Um, but under lower levels of gameplay, Camilla is such a threat because you can, it's low rune quality. You only need to build it about um, you need to build it about speed HP HP or triple HP depending on your rune quality. You don't even need to build it HP crit damage HP. You can just put degenerate runes on it and it's enough to scare someone away from from attacking you, right? And then you have Rina. The Rina is the classic one, of the classic free, um, free to play stall units. I've seen people in G three. It was one guy last week that ran aerial and triple Rinas, and he was in G three, and. That defense doesn't win, but it definitely made me not want to attack him because having Ariel cut in with the double nemesis set and then healing all those arenas back up to full, it's, it's a big waste of time. And if you don't get a Zyros reset on it and they heal back up, your pump back is more likely than not not to kill anything because of the 50% HP lead. And then we have Wusa. Wusa is commonly used, but the only problem with Wusa is you get Tiana'd. But if in lower ranks, not everybody has a Tiana, not everyone has a Triton, not everyone has a Stripper, right? So the idea under Wusa is you put up the shield buff, and then it has the extra extra shield buff for them to do for them to do even more damage to take out your units, right? But it's fairly very poor against Tiana just because its third skill is essentially useless. Uh, so you want to build it swift if you want first turn to put that shield buff up and then uh, soak soak up. And then under the fire, uh, the fire monsters, I've kind of built them in two tiers. Uh, the first one is the Nat Fives, right? Obviously, the Nat Fives, uh, Rakan has always been good, even after the nerf uh, to its collapse. It's still good because one is HP lead, fifty percent fire, so you can run an HP crit damage HP or triple HP, depending on what type of runes you have, how, how much you want to dedicate your runes to just AD, and. The threat here is, you know, if you try to Lucian it, Rakan is capable of soloing bomber teams if you get the immunity off a second skill. It is capable of one-shot and collapsing Lucian if you're building a crit damage build. And all you really need is to go once, and then your pa and your collapse passive is up, and then you can potentially solo. And Perna is a classic, but um, the only problem with Perna is it, it's food against Alicia users, and it's a, a pseudo-healer with its... Um, with its skill, and it's going to violent fuck a lot. You already know uh, Perna's going to violent fuck a billion times and heal the team in full, and it also acts as a threat to any um, any any win units that they use against your Ariel, Praha, Camilla, Ari um, Rina. And you have Kumar. Kumar was recently buffed, and just because he's a fire unit in itself, it makes it good for defense to deter uh, Lucian users, especially if you run a bunch of water units. You want a fire threat to counter um, that wind threat. So you, that's something you want to consider uh, when you build your AD. And then under, we have a bunch of NAF 4s. They're not the greatest, but I've, if these are options that you can consider. So when, when you use Chloe, the Chloe is the same idea as running a Wusa. You put the first skill, you go first turn, put the third skill up, you got. Um, all your shields up, immunity up, and then they go. If they don't, if they don't have a stripper, they don't have no Tiana. They're essentially wasting their first turn onto you, and doing nothing by pressing first skill. And then, and then it wastes one whole a good thirty seconds, right? Because the AI, your AI is gonna go after their AI. But I've also seen Chloe on double nemesis, and then it triggers the passive if it gets cleaved. Now, something to consider, but I don't think it's that great. And then Kamoon. Kamoon is essentially only good. For its 
passive, you know, the, the, the shield buff. That's all it's good for. It's, it's not a good unit, but this is something you consider using if you need a fire threat. It needs to be sort of fast, because if you're not getting turns, you're not moving to put up a shield. Kind of whatever, don't recommend it. The Fire Mummy is a classic. The Fire Mummy has been used in three years ago with Double Rena Fire Mummy, or sorry, Double Fire Mummy Rena Freya uh, Monster uh, AD. And what it does is it just reflects damage. Uh, so that's something you, maybe you want to consider play around with. Don't don't recommend it, but if you have no options, I've still seen it used um, to this day. Actually, last week's Legend got. Uh, legend with the fire mummy, but he didn't get it with fire mummy. He got it because his ADO was powerful. Okay, and then we have Freya. I used Freya in my video. Uh, the free to play G three defense. I used it as stall. So what Freya does is it requires no rune quality. Just put it on will. It could be white will runes. Its role is to just die and heal up your team and reset the playing field. It cleanses um, any defense breaks as well. So that's why it's good to reset the playing field per se. So Freya, once again, no rune quality required. Slap it in. I ran. I was missing one rune on my Freya, and I still got G three. And then we got the wind units now. So the wind monkey king. It's good for three reasons I can think of top of my head. Uh, first, it's this leader skill in a trip uh, thirty three percent HP I believe or thirty percent HP. So giving all of your water units, your fire units more HP is something that is super good. Second of all, his passive. If they're constantly attacking you and you proc and stun their team, it's a threat for them to die and you're also stalling them. And third, uh, it is, it's, it's a threat, right? You build it probably HP, crit damage HP, and you do enough damage and it counts as a threat if you're building um, a lot of if you're building like a lot of fire units, they bring an Alicia, maybe you proc and you stun the Alicia and it doesn't get the reset skill. So it's a deterrent um, because the, the kit is pretty good, pretty decent for running stall. And then you have Ratesh. Ratesh is built generally, you know, triple HP and pretty fast. It's really, really hard to cleave, a, even Fat Lucian, a Ratesh, right? And double Lucianing a Ratesh with Something like a Nemesis Healer is not going to work either. So Ratesh is innately tanky. It has a speed buff on turn 1. And its third skill is an AoE defense break. And if you just proc a Violent and you attack the defense broken monster, there's a threat for you to finish off their team. So that's why I put Ratesh under general stall units. It's not like a stall stall unit, but it's got a threat to, um, to put in your stall team. And then we have the Windrood. The Windrood is like a premium Treon in my opinion. If you pair it with the Vanessa, it's even more stally. Um, you got you got like revives after revives after revives. So that's the idea behind the wind rude. It's um, going to just revive, and and have um, that stupid third skill. I don't remember its name. And then we get to the light and dark units. We have Gene. So Gene probably isn't one of the best free to play. Sorry, not the best uh, stall units. The reason I say that is it only the only thing it really provides is. If you live, if you live, you can provoke them and you control the playing field and you keep healing with um, your with the with its kit, right? So if you live, it works. But I don't. Really, I wouldn't suggest Gene to put on stall. Something you can try out. But um, the resistance lead, I believe, it doesn't really apply. So that's why Prawha fits the role better. If you want to resist Dalians, um, Zyros's. And then you have Maldi. Maldi's um, kit makes you glance. So if you just glance, if you miss a crit on that Zyros Dilution and you don't kill anything, it's pretty much game over for you. You can recover, you can heal with its kit, you can put the air shield up and cleanse someone and, and go from there. And then you have um, the Amara. What it does is, <clears throat> I guess if you run on Nemesis or if you have a healer like Ariel Praha, it heals up, the the Anubis lives, and then if something else died, it can reset the playing field, cleanse, revive something, right? So that's what it's for, but generally, I don't think you're dedicating your bot runes for um, for this unit to put on defense, because it has to be tanky to live, depending on what you pair it up with. And then you have Beta. Beta has the anti-crit, so it does very similar things to Wusa. If 
if you run like a swift beta, for example, and people underestimate you in lower ranks because they can't look at your runes, they, they try to Lucian you, but you get first turn because it's 300 speed, well, game over. Now they're trying to crit you, maybe they won't crit, maybe they will, and if you have three other tanks paired with beta and you have anti-crit on, um, tough luck for that Lucian user. But if they have Tiana, again, same story with the Wusa beta, you're not going, your third skill essentially did nothing. Uh, you might want to put your beta on will. I don't think Nemesis beta really works. Essentially, you want your beta to live or go first turn. Uh, so that is not, a, once again, it's not a comprehensive list of all of the general stall units you can use. But some very common stall teams that I've seen, I can list them out for you. First one is going to be uh, Rakan lead, Harmonia, Triana, Camilla. That was a Legend AD um, a few months ago. In the last patch another one is going to be aerial camilla and you toss in a fire threat and then another like a wind unit for example so that way you have like a mono element i'm uh, sorry a, tr uh, a trio element team another one can be a praha and then you use your perna you can use triana and then you can toss another unit in so the idea is you don't die to a a double Lucian hit because you healed up, but then it dies to a fat Lucian team, right? Because double nemesis Praha and Triana is not going to live that. But then if you pair it up with, let's say, two fire threats, it may have potential to slow that Lucian. And another one that I've seen is you just run Darien, Molly, and a bunch of uh, other units. That way you have damage mitigation. And you have glancing chance, and you're just hoping they kill nothing, and you reset the playing field. And uh, some uh, earlier, I mentioned this AD was used like two, three years ago. It was the double fire mummy free arena. You probably don't suggest you build these random units just to succeed in AD. After all, it's most about your AO. Um, alternatively, you can run uh, Wind Monkey King, for example, Camilla, Rena, and another unit. Uh, you can just play around, test around, but building a stall defense is essentially saying that I'm going to lose all my AD hits, but you're going to take five minutes to clear me. Do you want to take five minutes to blow your swords onto me, or would you rather skip me and go to the next person? If they skipped you, your defense officially worked. If you see your defense is getting constantly attacked one minute ago, zero minute ago, zero minute ago, zero minute ago, it's because you probably built a bad defense. Or bad stall defense, or your stall defense is um, that's not working because you ruined it incorrectly, or maybe you just climbed up too high of a rank and you don't belong there, and the rune quality of that rank is just blasting you away. And I can't give you a specific uh, name. I can't give you a specific speed for your double nemesis or single nemesis healers. It varies between ranks. My Lucian, um, as you can see, let me just minimize this. So my Lucian, its its speed is pretty pretty fast, right? It's at one eighteen and one one six, and just for testing purposes, because they nerfed Ragdoll, I want to see if Ragdoll even cuts me. I'm getting a little distracted here, but hold on, I want to see. <clears throat> So like I mentioned before, the purpose of Wusa here against um, double, double Lucian users is to put the shield and do damage mitigation, right? Sorry, not damage mitigation, put the shield to mitig to have more, more HP. <clears throat> so, so even with the Ragdoll buff, so even with the Ragdoll passive, none of his units moved, like his Perna didn't cut me. His ragdoll didn't cut me because I'm so supercharged fast. I have speedly, I have speed buff, I have Renard third skill, I have Bastet um, buff, and I'm just generally fast, right? So his units are just too slow. So that's what I mean when I when I say your speed varies. You, you do, it depends on your rank. If my Lucian's was like plus 50 speed, it's all just going to cut me. And <clears throat> I intentionally excluded um, OP, nat LD, nat 5s like Nagong. Um, from this list because probably none of you guys who are watching have this 
And as a final word for this video, some of the rush hour tips I have for you um, to finish at a higher rank. You know, maybe you're rushing to C3, maybe you're rushing to G1. Um, these tips will help you. Uh, we call it rush hour because it's usually the full hour if um, you're climbing from really low. But generally, it's only the last 30 minutes you really, really try to push uh, really hard to get to the next rank. So my first tip for you is have a very fast clearing AO. If you don't have a AO, you don't know how to build one, check out my videos. I have one about Lucian. I have one about Tiana. Uh, check that out. But that is your first um, goal to succeed uh, if you want to get a new rank like G1. And second tip, don't get into revenge wars. Maybe you're clearing that guy in 30 seconds. But you know what? This guy... He's probably bruising you. He wants to get back at you. He doesn't care about his points like you do. You are essentially wasting your sword every time you get into a revenge war. Don't get into that. If you see them on your, a, a, um, your AD list, only revenge them maybe in the last five minutes because they're either out of swords or maybe they're not checking their list and they won't attack you. And always have an idea on your AD list of what you can clear really fast. That way, if you're in the last... Two three, uh, two, three minutes, even one minute, and you don't know what to hit because your list is so hard, just go back to your AD list and refer back to it and slam that one guy that you were revenge warring. So if you are casually going at it for G1 and not blowing a lot of swords, always hit the bottom of your list. It gives you the maximum value for your points, and you don't want to refill 10 times just to get G1 um, unless you think Arena is super fun like me. And if you hit the last two on your list, Tip number four, just restart your game, close your game, and then it refreshes your list. It's a free way to refresh your list. No 10 crystals required. And then consider using your 10 crystals if you're really, really close to your new rank. Maybe you're C3, but you want that red star on your profile. Just hit that refresh with the 10 crystals. It is expensive, but if you have 10 buff going on, you have to spend that 10 crystal to refresh your list if you want to... Um, keep that 10 buff going. That 10 buff is significant because of the attack bonus and HP bonus. And if you uh, enjoyed this video, please just drop a follow on my Twitch. You know, subscribe on YouTube. Um, leave a comment below of what kind of defense guide you want next. Um, I'm, I, I wouldn't say I'm like super professional at it, but I do have a considerable amount of knowledge considering that I am a legend contending player. But my, AD are, my ADs are garbage and I rely on my AO. So AO is where it's at. And thanks for subscribing.